So what's this peculiar thing I hear you asking? Well, it's a DC power supply made in a Makita flashlight. And in this video, I'm going to give you a tour around how I made it and why I made some of the decisions in my version. This is going to be a talk through my DC power supply made from a Makita LXL M01 or DML 186 flashlight uh, in the style of Tom Sachs, but I've done my own little twist on it. So this is what it looks like when you take the thing apart. Well, you take out three screws and then the two sides split. I'm being pretty careful with this because it's wired together and they're quite delicate wires. Um, that just gives you an idea of the, the moulding at the sides. When you take it apart, you get these parts out. So this is the LED board and the little switch that goes on the side. And these are the fairly thin wires that go to the battery terminals onto here. Uh, they're really not not that thick but then again it's only running six LEDs and a bunch of supporting components so it doesn't have to do much. This is the reflector it's plastic coated and once you get rid of those you're left with an empty case which is what we want. So the, this is the board that does everything this is the LM2596 buck converter um, which will step down DC voltage to variable DC voltage we want. Now these things usually come with a little uh, trim potentiometer right here. Tom Sachs on his left that behind and drilled a little hole in the front window so you can adjust it with the screwdriver. There's nothing wrong with doing that, nothing wrong with carrying a little screwdriver with you. But just because I could and because I quite like knobs and I have a bunch of these knobs that I put on other things. Um, I decided to go and, and fit uh, a, an external potentiometer, which is what I've done. This is matching potentiometer I got from Amazon. Uh, I can't remember the exact specs, I'll put them up on the screen, but it matched the trim pot on there. And this then allows me to connect in the three wires here, into three wires on the pot, and that gives me control. Now initially this was backwards, but in the process of take, uh, taking this video, um, I have fixed it, so now it's the correct way around. And this is the left, the, the lowest stop of the potentiometer, but it actually goes around a lot further than required. Of course, these buck converters, these things, can only go up to the supply voltage. So once you get to your supply vo voltage, it'll stop, but they can go up to 36 volts, which is why that approximately covers that whole range of about up to 36 volts. So like I say, you can, you can leave the trim pots behind, it's fine, but uh, I decided not to. So I'll show you around this a bit better. So we have our Makita, if I flip this over, I'm being very careful because these connections here, um, they're not the strongest. I've tried to socket most things, but uh, that's not the strongest. So the two connections to the battery, just on there, this is intended for this switch, which replaces the little push button. I just expanded the hole and put the switch in there and it's got its two little spade terminals on. Um, it's quite tight in there with, with those two when you put it together. Um, this is the connector for the potentiometer. This is the input side by the way. This is the connector for the potentiometer. I just happen to have all of these sockets and, and the little crimp connectors. So I did it this way, like I said, just because I could. But you don't have to. The reason this was backwards is because I actually had this connector plugged in the wrong way around, so I could flip it. And what I've done then is colour code, if you can actually see it, the orange, red and brown to correspond to plugging that in the correct way around. And it works properly. So power, 
through here, into here, and then out to these two terminals. Now this is, the board itself is just about the same size as this uh, outer housing. So it butts up until these capacitors touch the front window. And then this is just hot glue with my 18 volt Ryobi glue gun, um, which works great with Makita batteries. So I'll give you a better look at the way that sits. These two little ears at the side work quite well. And it does actually wedge in between, but it takes very little to pop it back out again. Then the two outputs go to this uh, pair of binding posts and banana plug terminals. So these are actually binding posts. So they're speaker binding posts, so you can, you can put a cable through the hole or use your traditional crocodile clips or, I mean, you can get crocodile clips or these things, which are very, very good. Uh, if you can see that and focus properly, these are extremely good and quite cheap. Or your standard crocodile clips for DC. And they just plug straight into the top, or just any wires can go in there. And that's essentially it. One of the most difficult parts about this is actually getting the thing to go together. Because, well, this took up an incredibly small amount of space. So actually getting it together is quite difficult and the two halves have to fit in properly. But um, I'll give you another look at that with the screw terminals. Those are just little um, eyelet connectors. And I've actually gone through and soldered all of these because as much as I love these little crimp terminals, you can see the solder on there, as much as I love these crimp terminals, they love to come off. I mean, I've used them on cars for years. They just love to pop off any chance they get and just leave it by a bare wires, which is no fun. So, yeah. Nice mouldings on this. It's uh, not bad. I mean, it's a, a cheap part, but uh, a cheap thing, really. This, this flashlight. I suppose it's probably a good flashlight. I never even tried it. Um, there are side clips that you can remove. There are screws in here and you can remove the parts that would be here. Uh, I can't fully remember. I'll flash up a picture now if I can find it that shows what goes on the side. And uh, suffice to say, um, you ex you're voiding your warranty by doing this and removing your stickers, but you knew that already. <laughs> and uh, you could paint yours white if you wanted to. This did come in white, uh, which is the one that Tom Sachs based his on, which is very nice. I went for the Makita teal because, you know, I like the colour, so must be something wrong with me. But yeah, I'm going to put this back together now and um, show you how it works if I don't destroy it putting it together because some of these connections are, yeah, they're a bit flimsy. So uh, if I get it back in one piece, I will see you again soon. Okay, with all of the wires plugged in, this is the trickiest part because you've just got things that don't necessarily want to share the same space and it's got to go together like that. What are the chances of me doing this on camera? <laughs> I've probably left these wires a little too long, but um, that's deliberate. That has potentially gone together. Nothing is particularly fouled up. I didn't hear anything break. Uh, let's get the screws in and uh, and see what happens. There wasn't actually any swearing, surprisingly. Using the uh, Vera set that I got with the. Uh, Advent calendar last year. Really good little set. Really good tips on the screw drivers. You see the serrations on there. They really get a good grip. If you actually hold the pieces together.
not going to go too tight until I've actually tested it. Right, these markings are actually now correct as well. So, in Blue Peter style, I have here a 5 amp hour Makita battery. Oh, it works, that's good. So that should be around, if I put it to 5 volts, we're at 5 volts there. Uh, if we go up to that, should be 12 volts approximately. It's quite sensitive, but really that's fine. It isn't meant for accurate uh, voltages. And then you go all the way up, ooh, in this case up to 18.9. Didn't realise it go quite that high. That's obviously the battery voltage that it's getting. Didn't realise these batteries went as high as 18.9. I put 17 on there, but it's um, it's close enough. Nice bright screen. Um, I didn't want to put a hole in this plastic either because it's brittle plastic. And drilling this, getting it clean and being able to see through it properly, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I'd rather not do it if I can come up with a more complicated solution. Right, I'm going to get my leads from my power supply, which I've been using. Like I, I didn't plan this bit very well. And that's your supply, really. If I turn this on, we'll set this to 18 volts because we have well, we're going to be plugging this into the, just for testing it, we'll just plug it into here. This is obviously running on 18 volts because it's the old Makita light. I have no idea if this is switched on or not. Yeah, that's blinding. But yeah, that's it. 18 volts. This regulates the output based on its input. Obviously, if the battery voltage drops, it won't be able to go as high as that. Something I should just point out. The button here, this corner, toggles the display between input and output uh, voltage. So you want to have that set to the display you want before you block it behind this panel and put the whole thing together. Otherwise you could be a little bit disappointed with what it shows. But uh, I think that's it. I could demonstrate it with other things. but. Um, it's a power supply, you know what it does. They've got certain limitations. Probably these cables are going to be the biggest limitation. But um, I'll leave some links in the description to some of these items. They're available from all sorts of places. I had the switch in stock and the, the knobs I already had. The best place to get one of these flashlights, I would say, is through a tool supplier on eBay when they're having a sale on. Because that's I will buy all my Makita stuff when it's on sale. That's about it. Hopefully if you make one of these, uh, it's a good little project and uh, it's useful to you. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.